First of all, I would like to say many, many thanks to all the esteemed ambassadors uh, for your really incredibly thought-provoking uh, talks. Uh, just, just they, they give much food, much food to think. Um, and uh, I regret that I will not be able to uh, address your talks individually, which I would like actually to do, but perhaps uh, in our personal conversations, we, we could uh, uh, continue this. Um, I, I think I, I would like to, to make a few basic uh, general points, uh, express a few, a few thoughts that I have. Um, after I heard your talks and something of which I have been thinking for last uh, years and particularly for over the last uh, four months since this war, this terrible war began. And uh, let me begin with uh, something which uh, Vladika Boris uh, uh, said at the beginning um, Vladiko, you mentioned that the matter is delicate. Um, and uh, let me start with being not delicate. Uh, so my, my view uh, is that, uh, and I think that in a certain sense, I'm now in accord, uh, in accord with, uh, with much of what you said. Uh, I, uh, I think... Uh, uh, um, uh, Pani Tamar uh, uh, mentioned the uh, counterproductive. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so I find I find uh, the way how uh, the Vatican deals with uh, uh, with this war uh, as not only insufficient but uh, uh, at times flawed throughout almost throughout, uh, one misstep after the other. Um, and uh, I, I have been thinking about the, the reasons for, for, for this. And uh, I, I learned so much from what you said about the perspective of uh, the personality of Pope Francis, which is so important. And what, what you mentioned about uh, Pani Tatiano, about the Argentinian uh, perspective that's really insightful, and we must think about this. Yeah, we, uh, it's uh, uh, it's really necessary uh, to include it in our thoughts. But let me address uh, another aspect: uh, the history and and uh, to, ta to take a, a long uh, um, look at the history of uh, uh, the Holy See dealing with Russia and not only dealing with the Russia of the last 100 years, but even a little bit longer. Let's take from the 19th century. I will not tell uh, long uh, stories, but just, just a few main points. It's, it's interesting and fascinating how we begin to rethink our attitudes, what we know about Russian culture including the Russian religious culture today, after uh, what, uh, what is happening today. Uh, because we'll, we'll look at the 19th century classical Russian uh, religious thinking, and I, and I have been teaching a class on Russian religious thought yeah, for, for years already. And now when I, when I take the same texts, including the thinkers that are very respected, uh, also in Ukraine, like for instance, Vladimir Solovyov, whom I uh, have been loving <laughs> throughout my, my, my life. But now when I, when I today take his famous Russia and the Universal Church, I begin thinking, my goodness, what kind of mythology is all that, that the Russian Tsar once uh, will unite all the Slavic peoples, and uh, then uh, uh, the union with uh, 
Rome uh, um, uh, happens, will be achieved, and all that mythology, this kind of mythology, and, and generally the 19th century Russian, Russian culture, including that, such famous name, names, not, not uh, now, not so much from the, uh, uh, the um, camp of the Catholic sympathizers like Vladimir Solovyov, but uh, also the Orthodox, including Dostoevsky and all that, yeah. they uh, really affects the the way how the Vatican have been dealing has been dealing with uh, Russia, with the Russian Empire, uh, since at least the 19th century. Uh, this image of Russia as a powerful, great country. Uh, which perhaps gives us one day a chance to a unification of the world Christianity when the Tsar and the Pope come together and uh, unite the humanity. All this is somehow, I'm, I don't mean to say that this is present today in the same form as it was in the 19th century, but it still affects somehow the memory of, of this. And a sign of, uh, of this is, is Fatima, this constant and repeated dedication uh, to, to Fatima. I, I, I abstain from, from judgments about the, uh, this uh, revelation. I, 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 I don't want to make any, any judgments now, but let me make clear that the very substance of, of the Fatima re revelation is absolutely dated. It's dated because uh, it speaks about the Russian Empire. And only if we, if we uh, uh, think that the Russian Empire still exists and still should exist and should continue to exist, uh, we can uh, really um, find a place for the uh, Fatima revelation in today's world. And then we, we, we necessarily acquiesce with the way how Russia deals with its neighbors. Uh, I see a clear logical line here, a clear logical line. We could, uh, I, I won't, won't speak further about, about Fatima. I have my, my, my own approach, uh, my own thoughts about this, but, but uh, uh, let me repeat, uh, let's, let's think about this in historical terms, what happened in 1970, when the Russian empires actually was uh, still existing, existing and uh, on, the verge of, on the verge of collapse. And by the way, uh, did you notice, and uh, so, so many of us, my, uh, myself included, we say the Ottoman empire, it, it was said yeah, in, 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 uh, in this circle today, the Ottoman empire, and the Russian Empire. Actually, actually, why? We don't say the Turkish Empire. We prefer to say the Ottoman Empire. We mention the dynasty, not the nation. We should uh, use the expression the Romanov Empire. This will underscore the degree of multi-ethnicity, ethnicity, multinational nationality of. Uh, the Romanov Empire, uh, not, to, not to reduce all this uh, uh, to one nation, because it was not a nation state. It was a, a colonial, a real colonial empire, the Romanov Empire, yeah. like the Ottoman Empire, the Habsburg Empire of the 19th century. Paradoxically, this Romanov Empire uh, collapsed in 1917, but was continued in a paradoxical form of the Soviet state, uh, contrary to what happened with uh, the Ottoman, uh, with the Ottomans and uh, the Habsburgs. Uh, and so all this, all this tradition, all, the, all this idea about the, 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 the this history of the great empire, which may uh, give a chance to, to the unification of world Christianity, is still, I have the impression, is still somehow alive and 
uh, uh, present, present today, despite the fact that uh, we must clearly see, and we, we are trying uh, on, the, on the Ukrainian side, we are again and again, we are trying to say this uh, in, in the West, uh, the, the Kremlin and the leaders, the, 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 the leaders of Russia claim that Ukraine is a failed state. Russia is a failed state. Russia is a failed nation, rather, because it has lost itself in the position it had the empire in the, during the Soviet period. And it uh, quasi lost it, but not quite lost, because uh, some parts of it uh, re receded, but uh, some parts remained. And this position between, between the fronts, between, the, between a nation state and a colonial empire, this is what constitutes a huge problem for this nation. And it, it, this is what I mean when, 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 I say, when I say actually Russia is, is, a, is a failed uh, nation in, in, a, in, a certain, in a certain sense. Yeah. I, I mean this by no means to to uh, uh, to um, uh, somehow to de to denigrate any uh, uh, any nation. This is a tragedy. It's a tragedy, uh, and we we can only hope and pray that that uh, the Russian nation is able to restore yeah, its its uh, real real national uh, consciousness and and a nation state, not a colonial empire. This is a problem, quite contrary to what happens uh, with Ukraine, with all the problems that uh, Ukraine, which you mentioned also, that the Ukrainian state has, but, but here is clearly a nation on the rise, and no one uh, would, be, uh, would doubt this, would be able to doubt this after what we see uh, now in, during the last uh, uh, several months. So uh, yeah, and uh, if if I have a, a couple of uh, yeah, I'm I'm <laughs> uh, I'm closing. I, I just I just uh, wanted to add uh, just just have so uh, so many points somehow appeared. Uh, Pan Anatoly, uh, you 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 asked whether the Vatican sees only the uh, towers of Zagorsk in Moscow, yeah, the, this official residence of, uh, of the Patriarch, or uh, does, does it really see the, the towers of St. Sophia in Kiev? And let me say, in, in my view, uh, uh, yes, it does see, but it, it thinks that it, it's Russia. The, the, the answer is very simple. And it's still, there are still many many people in in the vatican that that think that that it's that it's russia and and this is this is the problem so and uh, uh this, the, the, this is um, uh, also brings me to to um, uh, the thought about um uh, what what could be done about this um and I think that the the problem at the core, and I'm not I'm not speaking now about personalities, perhaps. And uh, I, I appreciate this this perspective once again from uh, from the personality of of Pope Francis, but rather about the Vatican as an institution. I think that the the problem is that uh, the non transparency and uh, uh, the absence of participative nature of the church with the Vatican. It's a non-transparent structure. It needs, it needs, uh, it badly needs a radical reform as, as the whole Roman Catholic Church, actually. And uh, uh, I, 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 will not, I will not say, uh, uh, speak in terms of uh, democracy or Liberty, because I know immediately, particularly in the American context, uh, I will be immediately approached with the question: Yeah, where, where are you actually on this uh, spectrum 
of uh, uh, liberal versus conservative. I, I, I actually liberal or, or leftist or rightist or uh, conservative. Uh, I, I'm just trying to, 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 to be neither and maybe to be both, I, I, I don't know, with, uh, with, with all the understanding of the conservative nature of the, of the church on the one hand. But on the other hand, of the understanding of how badly we need reform in the church. And, and the Vatican is an epitome of non-transparency. So, uh, uh, so, and my, my next step would be to say that, that we, on, on the, if we, if we look from the Ukrainian perspective, uh, it brings me to the question to, 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 to a, uh, to an issue which is so so favorite, <laughs> on which I, I I like to speak and enjoy, uh, uh, think that it's so important, really, the nature of the presence of the Eastern churches in the Rome, in the Catholic Church. Uh, uh, so I, I I'm afraid that that most Roman Catholics, including the people in the Vatican, are still not aware of what what kind of a provocation. And a challenge is the very presence of the Eastern Church within the structure of, uh, of the World Catholic uh, Church. And I think this, this presence, which is by far not, uh, still not regulated uh, uh, by the, the, this deposition, our position in the Roman Catholic Church, in, in the Catholic Church, yeah, is uh, precarious. Uh, because it, it does not recognize the, the, the uh, uh, structures of uh, the um, Roman Catholic Church still do not recognize the uh, reality which lies behind the idea of the plurality of the churches, plurality of cultures, plurality of rights within the Catholic Church. Uh, I've been asked once at a conference, and I'm really closing, just, just perhaps one last thought. Uh, I think we were present together uh, with Panolech uh, at this conference by an Orthodox colleague. There was a rather a big conference in Stuttgart on the uh, Orthodox Eastern Catholic dialogue. And uh, it was a sort of half-half Orthodox and uh, uh, Eastern Catholics, and uh, there was much criticism of uh, the Vatican practices uh, on part of both sides. Yeah? And an Orthodox colleague uh, has uh, asked uh, um, the um, Eastern Catholic participants, uh, uh, yeah, actually, wh why, why don't you think about uh, joining our family, the family of uh, the uh, Orthodox uh, churches, non non uniate churches, and that 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 let me think, that make made me think, and my answer would be, because I think this is our mission to change the Catholic Church from within, yeah, from within, and. This is this is a very a great challenge, and I I, I don't know whether whether we we uh, we manage this, but I think we must we must uh, really contribute contribute to uh, to a reform really to a reform of the Catholic Church. Yeah, uh, thank you. That might might be perhaps a, a couple of thoughts that might lead at times too far <laughs> away from the strictly from our subject uh, but that, that that was inspired by your wonderful wonderful talks your excellencies